Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a Korean science fiction film, Space Sweepers. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The story starts in the year 2092. The Earth on which humans used to live has been completely squandered. The once green land has devolved into deserts and acidic soil that has resulted in the extinction of plants. As a result of these developments, the UTS Corporation constructed a new orbiting home for humanity. But unfortunately, only a few people could ascend. Humanity has either remained on the planet's surface or has relocated to the or constellation of colonies. These city-sized spaceships range in size from residential structures to industrial factories to giant slums. Salvagers and space sweepers risk their lives hunting and reselling whatever satellites or space vehicles that they discover floating in the upper atmosphere. In this scene, Tiho, a space sweeper, enters the UTS lost and found to obtain a glimpse of a seven-year-old girl recovered cadaver. Initially, the staff will not allow him to look because his payment is insufficient. But later, a female staff member will let him look if he will give his magnetic shoes to her, which he does. He immediately heads to the orbit to meet up with his crew of space sweepers, after confirming that it was not the person he was looking for. While on his ride, Tiho looks at the environment through bus windows, reflecting how bleak and uninhabitable the Earth, which is ideal for his current emotional state. A few reporters from Earth ascend to meet James Sullivan, the founder of UTS. Throughout James's talk, he discusses how everything works in his new Eden, but a male reporter rebuts and debates his perspective for the people who are undergoing a humanitarian crisis. The ship triumphs on its mission to intercept a crashed spacecraft floating in space. The victory crew arrives late because the other space sweepers are already attempting to seize the spaceship. However, the victory crew is exceptionally competitive. They use every available resource they have to gain the object and eventually succeed in capturing it. When the crew arrives at a waste management factory, Tiho sells the item they obtained, only to discover that they must pay for the damage they unintentionally destroyed, which is greater than the money they earned. As a result, the crew attempts to salvage the crashed spaceship in order to earn additional cash. While the crew dismantles the ship and reassembles it, Tiho and his colleagues carefully observe and discover something suspicious. And later, they see a small child wearing a spacesuit who is still alive inside the cabin. After discovering, they quickly transfer her to their ship, and they become upset about it. But later on, the crew devise a plan to obtain a reward from the girl's parents. While deliberating on their strategy, the crew hears a news report about a terrorist organization called Black Fox, that their deadly weapon is missing, which is a small girl named Dorothy. It is an android that has been implanted with a hydrogen bomb. After realizing that their ship is carrying a ticking bomb, they immediately get Dorothy's belongings. The crew scrambles to devise a strategy for disposing of this terrorist weapon, and Tiho discovers an unanswered phone call from a man named Hyun Wu Kang, along with a file indicating that this man is a UTS employee and an antibiotic doctor. The crew decides to hold Dorothy and demand $2 million from Dr. Kang, and he agrees to meet a club ghost in the 32nd Commercial District. They have no idea that James Sullivan has heard the conversation between the Victory crew and Kang via their phone call. James Sullivan is also interested in Dorothy, because he believes that the human race's future is in danger, and that only Dorothy could help him to execute his plans. Later on, he has dispatched some space guards to retrieve the Victory ship. Meanwhile, as Tiho prepares to surrender Dorothy to Dr. Kang, he realizes that she is missing and they rush to locate her. On the other hand, everyone recognizes Dorothy and panics because they are aware of the dangers and possibilities that this girl could possess. Dr. Kang discovers Dorothy and is about to pursue her. But everyone is fleeing from her, which causes Dr. Kang to carry along with the crowd. The space guards begin to shoot the crowd and focuses on targeting Tiho. But Dorothy blocks the shots with an invisible force. The crew escapes and confers on their next course of action. Dorothy gradually warms up the crew as she stays with them, spending a lot of time bonding. Captain Jang is similarly moved by Dorothy's portraits of her. She totally appreciates the effort of Dorothy's drawing of her full body. Additionally, she reveals that her real name is Kot Nim, and that Dorothy is merely a code name. Captain Jang notices that a tomato plant has mysteriously sprouted and is now bearing fruit after failing to nurse it to be alive. Sullivan intends to unveil a new product aiming to transform the entire new planet, Mars, the mighty plant. Meanwhile, the Victory crew heads at a repair facility, but it's having difficulty due to a cash shortage. While they wait, Tiho and Kotnim come up with the idea to sell the tomatoes and end up raising enough money for their repairs and essentials. In this scene, Kotnim learns about Tiho's past that he was a former child soldier. While Tiho is doing one of his missions in Eden, 
He adopts a baby and raises it as his own, naming her Su Nai. Tiho gained compassion from Su Nai, which resulted in him being an unreliable space guard, which made him dismissal and expulsion from Eden. After the dismissal, Tiho became unhopeful and started to involve himself in drinking alcohol and gambling, and one day a freak orbital accident caused him to lose Su Nai. As a result, Tiho spends all this time attempting to save up enough money to pay for Su Nai's recovery every once in a while. The crew receives another call from Dr. Kang, who wishes to reconvene for the exchange. Tiho wishes to proceed, but Park expresses reservations about handing over Kotnim. But still, Tiho rationalizes his reasons for needing the money, as well as the fact that she is just an android, and that he is unconcerned about what the Black Fox will do to her. Shortly afterward, when Kotnim is on her way to the bathroom, someone kidnaps her. The crew pursues the assailant and eventually apprehends him. Tiho and Park are eventually cornered by a group, but eventually freed. They are surprised to discover that the kidnapper is Karam, because he has been their acquaintance and purchaser of their stuff. The crew and Karam's group attempt to reason with one another and exchange information. Captain Jang justifies that Kotnim is not a robot, as she is capable of poop which a robot could not do, and also reveals that she is the daughter of Dr. Kang. Karam reveals that he is a member of the Black Fox, but claims that the group is not a terrorist organization. Although it's a corporation, it is actually an environmentalist group dedicated to preserving the planet. She goes on to explain that Kotnim is not just a typical child, but a special one that could possess greater possessions that might be a helpful tool for their advantages. She also explains that Dr. Kang injected her with nanobots as a last resort because she had a disease that destroyed her nerves. While the nanobots become attached to her body, they endow her with an extraordinary ability to communicate, manipulate, and control nanobots in her vicinity. Also, she can restructure every living matter and can able to bring back the life of the planet. However, James Sullivan will use all her advantages for his project soon. This information is really private, which is why James Sullivan doesn't want anyone to know. So in order to prevent anyone from divulging this information, he let all the scientists who worked on the project remain silent. When Kotnim manages to escape with the help of nanobots, Sullivan devises a plan to assassinate Kotnim and destroy the Earth, while the blame will be put on Black Fox. The plan is to imprison her in space mines and detonate a bomb, which will kill Kotnim and launch the mine into the planet. That would result in a huge danger on Earth. When the space guards arrive, the meeting comes to an abrupt halt. The crew attempts to flee, but space guards locate and pursue Kotnim. The victory flies away, narrowly evading the space guards, but is compelled to enter the Lagrangian Point, a segment of space populated by indestructible nanobots that consumes everything. The victory is immediately engulfed in nanobots and is on the verge of being destroyed, but Kotnim uses her abilities to extricate the nanobots before she passes out. While the crew recovers her, they notice a news report about them that they are now being labeled as Black Fox members. In this scene, it is shown that Captain Jang was previously an engineer and a member of the UTS Genius Program before defecting and joining an anti-UTS group that came dangerously close to assassinating. And Park Kaiung Su reveals that he was the head of a drug cartel and is now hiding in fear of being executed if he returns to Earth. But he appears to have used the majority of his drug money to help others. They later receive a telephone call from Karam. He informs them that he is with Dr. Kang. They are all excited, and as a result, they fly quickly to meet them. Dr. K and her daughter Kotnim reunite when the ship of Victory and Karam volt in together. Everyone is now in tears as they witness Kotnim and Dr. Kang's heartfelt reunion. Both are in a state of bliss, and Kotnim recounts how she was nursed by everyone. However, their joy is interrupted when Sullivan and his space guards ambush them all. The Victory ship is now annihilated by the space guards. Sullivan abandons the Victory ship shortly after capturing Kotnim leaving the crew with dollar four million. Sullivan commands his army to observe the victory ship as he has plans for them. The crew is now arguing over whether Park should save Kotnim or not, and Tiho disagrees. The fight ends when Captain Jang informs him that they will pursue their mission and allows him to pursue his own to track down his daughter Sunai. The remaining crew stays to fight for their justice, and Tiho returns to the ship as he realizes the worth of his relationship with his co-crew and also to Kotnim. Tiho resumes on his position, while Captain Jay and Bubs take up their positions behind and on the ship's top, respectively. The crew gains more confidence to fight because Park is in command of the engines. They soon discover Kotnim and learns that the bomb is capable of eradicating all nanobots within a radius of more than 5,000 kilometers. The team decides to take Kotnim and fly her as far as possible, but struggles with the guilt of leaving the bomb 
because it can detonate and kill billions of people. At this moment, they decide to carry out a plan. The crew asks for assistance from their fellow space sweepers to join their fight against Sullivan. Shortly after, the space guards and Pierre arrive with the crew and attempt to assist them. Captain Jang broadcasts to everyone Sullivan's orbit recording. While aboard, the recordings reveal all his plans to exterminate billions of people on Earth and the truth about Cottonim. Sullivan breaks open the Victory cargo hold where Cottonim is hiding just as the Victory clears the 5,123km radius to keep Cottonim safe. To his surprise, she is not found inside. The Victory ship is now transporting, but Cottonim is now safely aboard Pierre's ship, which has been transferred earlier before the space guards arrived. Zero, and the hydrogen bomb explodes, capturing Sullivan ensuring the safety of everyone else. When the dust settles from the explosion, everyone realizes that the Victory crew cabin is safe because it is being guarded by indestructible nanobots under Cottonim EMS control. The movie ends when they finally see the man who stole their money. This guy is confronted by a beautiful girl that he fails to recognize, but later figures out that it is Bubs. Bubs is now a sophisticated girl. She used all her money to make a change for her appearance. After a period of time, the world learns everything and efforts to repair the planet. Cottonim contributes to the planet's recovery, and the team finally receives the funding they need. Kehub expresses his gratitude to Cottonim for using the nanobots to locate and communicate with Sunai. Their reunion is really a dream for Tiho, which is very sweet. Also, the Victory crew resumes their sweeping space duties, but this time with an upgraded ship and a new crew member. This is Angry Mustache Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.